Okay guys, this is a tutorial of binary search trees, okay? Binary search trees. I'm gonna go in depth on binary search trees and I hope you guys will follow along and understand what I'm talking about, okay? So what is a binary search tree? I'm gonna go slow, okay? A binary search tree is basically trees like this where we have a left child and a right child for every node, okay? Now, you could have empty nodes, but that doesn't matter. But for now, let's say that we have a left child and a right child. We have left child, right child pointers, okay? Anything on the left side is gonna be less than the current node. Anything on the right side is gonna be greater than, okay? So on the left side, it's gonna be less than. Everything on the right side is gonna be greater than, okay? That's pretty much what binary search trees are. All right, it's a tree structure. Anything on the left side is less than the node, current node. Anything greater than is going to be on the right side of the node, okay? Let's look at this tree. This is also a binary search tree. Why is that? Everything on the left side, even though it's empty, is less than the current node. Anything on the right side is greater than the current node. We have this, if you go through every sing, any node in this tree, the same property holds here. Everything on the left side is less than the five. Anything on the right side, seven, is greater than five, okay? That's what a binary search tree is. All right, so what is a good property of binary search trees? Well, one of the good properties is, is that you could traverse through trees, these trees, with uh, in order. Wait, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, so you could traverse through these trees through in order pre-order or post-order, okay? So these are tree traversals, all right? In order lets you pretty much uh, print out the tree in order. Pre-order prints out the tree, uh, prints out the node, uh, pr prints out the nodes, the children before it, and then post-order prints out the, the children's afterward, okay? So here we're gonna see that uh, So, oh yeah, yeah, okay, so I forgot to go over children, okay, so here, here's a current node, right? The children are the left and right uh, nodes below it, all right? Anything below it, that's a child, okay? So five and seven are children of this value six, okay? We normally call the top part the root. This is called the root because it's like the first node on the top, and we call that the root. Anything else below it are like its children. So this is a child and that's a child. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so how do you do in order traversal? This is called in order traversal. Let's go over it. Okay, to go in order traversal, you normally just go to the left and then the node and then the right. Okay, you go to the left subtree, then you go to, then you print out your current node, then you go to the right. And why is that? Well, when you ever you, if you look at this tree, in order to print it in order, you have to go through the, you have to print out the left side first because it's less than. Then you print out your current, then you print out your right because the right side is greater than. Okay. So in this case, our in order, in order traversal, which uh, let me actually, I'm gonna erase this. So I'm gonna call this in order. Okay. What is it gonna do? So first, I'm at six. I'm gonna go to my left subtree, right? Which is, uh, this is my left subtree, five, right now. All right, now I, I'm at my uh, left subtree. I'm gonna go to its left also, okay? Now I'm at two. I'm gonna go to its left. Well, there's nothing there, all right? So now I'm, I went all the way down to my left. Now I'm gonna print my current node, two. All right, and then I'm gonna print my right node. Well, there's nothing there, so I'm done with that. I'm gonna come back up here, and now I'm at up here, I'm gonna print out my current node, five. Then after that, I'm gonna print out my right subtree. What's my right subtree? Five, so I'm gonna print that out also. So this is what it's printing out, okay? Now I'm done with my left subtree here. Now I have to print out my current node. My current node is six now, because after my I'm printing out my left subtree, I'm gonna be back up here. What's my current node six? I'm gonna print that. Now at six, this six, I'm done. I'm gonna print out my right subtree. 
What is my right subtree? This side. So it's seven, right? I'm going to go to my right subtree. All right. Now I'm at my right subtree. I'm going to go to the left again, right? Left. Remember, it's left, then current node, then right. So I'm going to go to the left. There's nothing there. All right. I'm going to print out my current node, seven. Okay. I'm going to print out seven. Then I'm going to go to the right, eight. Okay. At eight, what am I going to print out? I'm going to go to the, its left. Nothing. All right. I'm going to print out the current node, eight. What am I going to write? Go to the right, nothing. So then I'm done. So that's in order traversal. All right. This is the in order traversal. These are the nodes after the in order traversal. I'll go over it again. Start at the beginning, go to the left. Okay. Then after this, I have to go to the left again. Right. Remember, I got to go to the left. Left, left, okay. Now I'm at that, I'm done at the left. I'm gonna go print out, go to its left. There's nothing, print out the current node two, right? Nothing, okay, just print out two. All right, now I'm done with the left subtree. Now I gotta print out the current node, five. I print it out, that, out, out that five. I'm gonna print out the right side, okay, five. Print that out. And then come back up here. And once I'm done with this, gotta print out the current node, six. Then I gotta go to its right. All right, so I'm at seven now. I gotta print out the left, nothing. Print out the current node, seven, eight. Then after that, go to the right, eight, nothing. Left, nothing. Print out eight, right, nothing. Okay, then I'm done. Okay, so that's an order traversal. Let's go over pre order. To do pre order traversal, uh, to do pre order traversal, you print the root before the values in either subtree. So it's gonna be node, left, right. Okay, so what is that? So I'm gonna print out my current node, six, then I'm gonna print out left subtree, then right subtree. Well, okay, now I'm at my left subtree. Current, print out the current node, left uh, five, then I have to go to my left subtree, then right subtree, okay? Current, print out the current node, two. Print out what's left, nothing, right, nothing, okay. Come back up here. So I just finished printing my current node, right, and then my left, now I have to go to the right. Okay, I'm at right, right. Print out the current node, five, and print out my left subtree, nothing, right, nothing, okay. Now I'm done with that, I'm done with left. Now because my pre-order, remember, it's on current node and then left, right, this is a current node, then left and right. Okay, so once I'm done with my current node, I gotta do, so I did my left node already, and then I have to do my right side. What's my right side? Okay, at seven, do your, print out your current node, seven. What's my left? Nothing, right, right, eight. So I go to my eight, that's my, print out the current node, eight, left, nothing, right, nothing. Okay, so that's pre-order. All right, post order prints the roots after the values in the subtree. Post order. So what does that mean? I'm going to print out left subtree, right subtree, then my current node. All right, left subtree, right subtree, then print out your current node. All right, uh, so what's my left subtree? Five. Okay, now I gotta go to my left subtree again, five. Okay, do then left subtree nothing, right subtree nothing. Print out your current node, two. So now I'm done with my left subtree here. Now I gotta go to print out my right subtree. All right, left, right, no, nothing. So I'm gonna print out five, because I print out my current node. Now I'm done with my left, right here. Now I just have to print out my current node, five. And then, yeah, I'm done with that. I'm done with my left subtree. Now I gotta go to my right subtree. This is my right subtree. Now I gotta print out my, go to the left subtree of this seven. What's my left? Nothing. What's my right? Go eight. Okay, I'm at eight. What's my left? Nothing. Right, nothing. Okay, right, I'm gonna print eight. All right, now I'm gonna come back here. Now I have to print out the current node, which is seven. And then after seven, uh, I've finished printing my left and right. I've finished my left and right subtree. Now I have to print out the current node, which is six. All right, and that's how you do post order. So I did in order, pre order, and post order. Those are the, uh, the traversals, right? I'm gonna explain it again. In order, you go left, right, uh, left node, right. If 
my bad. Left, node, right. I'm gonna print my left side subtree, then my node, then my right. Pre-order, pre-order prints root before the other values in either subtree. So pre-order, I'm gonna print the node, then my left and right. Post-order, I'm gonna print left, right, and then my node. Left, right, and then node, okay? That's what these traversals are. These are tree traversals. Okay, hope you guys understand. Okay, so how do you code this? Well, this is, I'm gonna show you guys the pseudocode for in order traversal from CLRS. In order traversal, tree, we call it, they'd call it tree walk, so they do it like this. If it's not null, if my current node is not null, we're gonna go in order, we call in order tree walk again on the left side, x dot left. I print out my current node. Then I do in order tree walk x dot right. Okay, so that's that's the pseudocode how you would do it. Go left, print the node, in order tree walk right. Okay, so recursively call these. All right, uh, you guys could probably figure out how to do pre-order and post-order. It's not that much different, the pseudocode of it, okay? Now, here's a theorem. Uh, this is just a theorem from the book. It's called 12.1, but it really doesn't matter the name. If X is the root of the N node subtree, then in order traversal takes O of N time. X is root of N node subtree in order walk takes theta of N time. So it would take one loop in order to do it. One theta of N, one for loop to do it. All right, we're gonna prove this now. Okay, so guys, we're gonna prove this theorem that it takes theta of n time. Okay, let's do this. So how are we gonna prove this? This is a proof. Let's write this mathematical function that tells us the time. We're gonna ask you to call these t of n, which is the time it takes for in order. Okay, when it is called on the root, okay? This in order visits all the nodes of the subtree. So since if this node visits all the order of the subtree, the, uh, I think omega, it's gonna have T of N omega N. So T of N would equal to omega N because it visits all roots of subtree, all nodes of subtree. So now we just have to show that T of N is equal to big O of N. So you have to show T of N is equal to big O of N, okay? So remember, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna explain what omega means, but in another video, I'll explain uh, asymptotic notation. So for now, just bear with me, okay? So we have to show this. So let's say that, um, in order takes a time constant, okay? The computer has to run something for in order walk when it's, the tree is empty. So we have, let's say it takes this time constant C. So at T of zero, we equal to C for some constant C. This is, a con this is the time it takes to, to, you know, process an empty tree. So this is empty node empty tree, right? Time for an empty tree. Time, empty tree. Okay, so now suppose we call the in, in order tree walk on a node X whose subtree has K nodes. Okay, so 
back in our thing. I don't know where I put it. Let's say that this, let's say we call in order traversal on this, this subtree. And this subtree has K nodes. Let's say this, this left, this whole side has K nodes. All right. So that means that the right side of the subtree is going to have N minus K minus one nodes. All right. N minus K minus one nodes. Okay. So remember this subtree, let's assume this has K nodes. Okay. Then the right side is going to be N minus K minus one nodes. Okay. We're, we're assuming this. Okay. The reason why it is uh, N is a total number of nodes. And if the left side has K nodes, then we're, then the right side, we have to subtract the total number of nodes minus K and minus the current root. So the right side is going to have N minus K minus one. Nodes. So suppose Subtree has K, uh, left subtree, I think it's left subtree, right? Uh, suppose left subtree has left, left subtree has K nodes. Left subtree has K nodes, right? Then right subtree is going to have N minus K minus one nodes. Okay. This is just an example. Okay. Um, the time that it takes to run in order traversal now is going to be bounded by this function. Okay. Now, why is that? Okay. So let's say you run a, comp uh, so this is going to be the time it takes to run on N nodes. Okay. The reason why is because that one, you have to process the left side, right? You have to process the left side and another one, you have to process the right side. So this function, this is processing the left side. This is the time it takes to process the right side. Okay. I hope you guys bear with me. Okay. So the time it takes for le this is the time it takes to process the left side. This is the function, the time it takes to process the right side. Okay. This D is just a random constant that the computer would take for like any verifying like different types of computers, right? So if one processor has greater time, then this is the time it takes for uh, this extra some constant that it takes to process nodes, right? Uh, it depends on whatever computer. So we call this a random constant D. Okay, uh, I don't know why I put for some D over here. For some D, for some D. Okay, so this is the time it takes to process the left side. This is the time it takes to process the right side. This is the, just the, a random constant for the computer, okay? And we bound this, this is the maximum bound that we bound it, okay? Reason why T of N could be less than or equal to this is because some some computers could be really really fast okay and really really fast it's going to take less than this amount of time it takes but the maximum time it could take is going to be this okay it's going to be the time it takes to add the left plus the time it takes to add the right plus some amount of constant to process the current root or something okay that's this mathematical function that we bounded okay so now um, now we need to show the time on recursive calls. So we have to prove this. I'm going to assert that this is true. Assert. I'm going to guess a time it takes after this recursive call, after a number of recursive calls. Okay. I'm going to guess that T of N is going to take C plus D n plus c for some constant. Okay, so these are random constants that we are going to assume it takes, okay? We are, this is assumption, we're guessing. We are guessing this, this time it would take, okay? So this c is just some random constant that it takes the cost. This d is a random constant for this, for it takes the process, I'm guessing one node, because like this seems like processing the root, okay? So I think d is processing the root, but 
It doesn't explain in the textbook, but th this is the, we are guessing this time constant, okay? We are guessing it. And C is just, remember these are just constants, okay? So, now we need to show, so we have to prove that T of N is less than this, right? So, let's say for uh, N is equal to zero. For N is equal to zero, when N is equal to zero, so we have zero nodes, okay? That means that this this equation is going to equal to um, c plus d times zero plus c. Okay, and this is going to equal to zero plus c, which is going to equal to t is zero, right? So this means that at t is zero, we're going to have some constant c that that it takes to process. So this is when there are zero number of nodes, and we're, this is gonna, t of zero is gonna cost just a C constant, okay? So add zero nodes, the computer's gonna run some amount of time, and that's our C, okay? So now, for N is greater than zero, we are going to substitute our equation that we guessed. So we're gonna substitute this into our equation of this, okay? Our equation that we pretty much uh, made up that is the upper bound. And the reason why we're able to do this is because we're asserting that this is less than or equal to, okay? We're asserting that this function is gonna be less than that. So that's what we're able to substitute. So using substitution, T of N, hope you guys can see, T of N is less than or equal to T of K plus T of N minus K minus one plus D. And this is going to equal to C plus D times K plus C plus C plus D times uh, N minus K minus one plus C then plus D. And then using factoring, it's gonna get you to C plus D times N plus C. Okay, so we just proved that this answer we got is the exact assumption that we guessed. So therefore it's true, okay? Because by plugging in the values, plugging in the equation that we bounded the upper bound by, and because it's less than or equal to it, we just proved that it's true, okay? Uh, the reason why we're able to plug it in is because we're assuming it's less than, that the bound is less than or equal to our big equation. So uh, by the way, uh, let's see, how did we plug it in? Uh, we just plugged it into a function, C plus D, and then we multiply by K plus C, right? And then we plugged it in the same thing, C plus D, then we multiply by our, the N here, which is N minus K plus minus one, and we plus C and then plus D, and yeah. So yeah, that, that's the proof. Okay, and basically that, that just proved that our in order tree walk takes theta of N time. So this just proved that, uh, so this C plus D, times n plus c, this is equivalent to theta of n, okay? And that's theta of n time complexity for this function, okay? All right, guys, so how do you search through a binary search tree? Well, it's pretty easy. Um, so let's say I want to find the value four. Like, I want to find this node four. How do I search it? Well, I'm going to start at the top, and if my value that I'm trying to find is less than what I'm currently at, I'm gonna go to the left. Otherwise, I'm gonna go to the right, okay? So, four is less than 15, I'm gonna go to the left. Okay, now I'm at six. Is six less than, is four less than six? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go to the left again. All right now I'm at three. Is four less than three? No, I'm gonna go to the right. I'm at four now, okay? So yeah, that's how you search in a binary search tree. So the pseudocode is like this. This is how CLRS wrote it, so tree search. Um, X is the current node, so X, and then K is the what you're trying to find. So K is uh, trying to find, node trying to find, the node you're trying to find. X is the current node, so X is the current node you're at. Okay, so um, if your current node that you're at is null, 
which uh, th that almost never happens because that means that like that means it's empty but or k is equal to x's value key value whatever key value it doesn't matter then i'm going to return x okay that means i'm at the position already right if the value i'm trying to find is equal to the, my current node's value then i just return x okay um otherwise we have to check if what we're trying to find is less than the current node's value or key whatever it's called yeah that key then i'm going to return search x is left i'm going to search that the x is left and then otherwise i'm going to do a tree search search x is right okay so this is the pseudocode so uh yeah i should have wrote tree search here but it doesn't matter so tree search x is the current node i'm at k is a node i'm trying to find if i'm at if it's null then that means like well yeah then it's null whatever um or my value i'm already at the value then i'm going to return x because that's my current node i'm going to return it because that means i'm equal to i know where it is otherwise i have to check if the current node i'm trying to find is less than my val my current node i'm at if the node I'm trying to find is less than the current node I'm at, then I'm gonna to go to the left side, return to search on the current node's left side. Otherwise, I'm going to search the right side, okay? So that's how you search. Okay, uh, now how do you, oh yeah, I forgot something. So now uh, let's think about how to do this iteratively. So this is an iterative version. Uh, this is a uh, search x k same thing So x is current node K is what you're trying to find Okay, so x is current node k is the one you're trying to find while my current node is not null and K is not equal to x's key or value whatever they call it it really doesn't matter if we got to check if it's let if my what I'm trying to find is less than my current key then I'm gonna go to my current key I'm going to go to the left okay I'm gonna keep going to the left otherwise I'm gonna go to the right so remember X is the node you're we're currently on K is the, the node that we're trying to find the key we're trying to find okay and then at the end I'm gonna return X so that's what this means. While I'm currently searching through the node, uh, well, my, while my current node is not null, and I'm not at the same, uh, at the right key, like I'm not, I can't find the key right, then, um, then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search through the left. If the key that I'm trying to find is less than my current node, I'm gonna go to my current node's left, okay? Otherwise, I'm gonna go to my current node's right, okay, I'm the right side. So I'm gonna to go to the right side. Uh, afterwards, after this while loop is done, I'm gonna return my current node, which is gonna be where I'm at, okay? Which is gonna be, after this while loop, it's gonna to equal to the X's key, or it probably will equal to null, and that means you can't find it. But yeah, that's how you do the iterative version. Iterative version, this is the pseudocode for the iterative version. This is the pseudocode for the recursive version, okay? Now let's think about minimum and maximum, how to find the minimum and the maximum. All right, guys, so how do you find minimum and maximum? This is how to find min, minimum, and maximum. So let's say I'm at this, this is the tree I'm at, 15, 16, eight, this is the tree that I'm, I just drew, right? Uh, what is the minimum value? Well, minimum value is two. And what is that? That's all the way on the left side over here. All the way on the left side. Reason why is because like, remember left side is the value that's your less than the current value you're at. So the minimum value is gonna be all the way on the left side. So this is the minimum value, min node. Okay, uh, what about our maximum value? Well, the maximum value is gonna be all the way on the right side, because remember the right side is gonna be greater than the current node. So we the va maximum value, maximum possible value in this tree is gonna be all the way on the right side. So this is the max. So 20 is the maximum value in our tree. Two is the minimum value in our tree also. And how do you write it? This is how you write it. 
Uh, to find the minimum, all you just have to do is keep going to the minimum. So tree min. This is the pseudocode that CLRS did. So while my left uh, x is left is not null, I'm gonna go to the left. And then after that, just return x. So what does this mean? X is the current node I'm at. Current node. Remember, x is the current node I'm at. I'm at. So let's say I start at 15. Uh, while my left is not null, six is not null, right? So I'm gonna keep go to left. Well, now I'm at six. Where's my left? Three. Three is not null, so I'm gonna go to three. Well, at three. Okay, now I'm at three. What is uh, my left? Two. Well, two's well, two's not null, so I'm gonna go to two. Okay, now I'm at two. What is my left? My left is null, I'm done. So then I'm gonna return two. So that's how you do, that's what this code is doing. Okay, this is my pseudocode. Uh, tree minimum x, while x is left is not null, I'm gonna go to the left. x is left, okay? And then after that, I'm gonna return x. So this is the pseudocode. Uh, let's think about how to do maximum now. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Tree max x, this is the pseudocode, while x is right is not null. I'm going to do x is equal to x dot right. Then return x. So yeah. So to do that, let's go back up to here. So I'm at my current node 15. My right side is not null. 18 is not null, so I'm going to go to the right. The right. Okay. Now I'm at 18. My right side 20. It's not null, right? 20 is not null, so I'm going to go to the right. 20. Now my right side. My right side's null, right? My right side's empty, right? Null means empty. Sorry, sorry guys if I didn't explain that, but my right side's null. There's nothing on the right side. So that means I'm gonna return 20. So yeah, that's how you do this, tree max. Okay, now it's gonna be pro uh, pretty difficult to think about. Let's go, let's go over successor and predecessor. Okay, this is gonna be pretty difficult to go over. Okay guys, so we're gonna go over how to find a successor. So what do I mean by the successor? It's the next value that is uh, greater than our current node uh, that is uh, in, in in order, if it's sorted in order, okay? So like, let's say I'm at 15, the next value that is sorted in order, that's a successor of 15 is gonna be 17, right? So if I were to sort all these no, uh, nodes from smallest to largest, the next value that is greater than 15 in sorted order is a successor, okay? So next value that's greater than x in sorted order is going to be the successor. So we're trying to find that now. So let's see. For 15, the successor is going to be 17, okay? Because if I sort everything, 15's successor is 17. All right, now let's think about this. What about six? Okay, so what is my successor of six? Uh, well, let's, that's just seven because uh, seven sorted order is, yeah, it's just seven. Okay, um, that was not a good, <laughs> that was not a good example to go over. Um, let's see, uh, well, about 13. What is my 13's successor? Okay, that, my successor for 13 is 15. So, 13's successor is 15. So, we have to think about a case for that. But let's think about what's my successor for uh da, 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 da. uh let's see seventeen yeah seventeen successor seventeen successor is eighteen so that's that so we have to think about how to figure out for that all, all, case also so ideally if um let's go back to the first case fifteen fifteen successor seventeen so to find the successor um of 15 it's the smallest value on the right side right because uh if it's sorted in order the smallest value on the right side the right side is like 18 its smallest value is 17 and that's the uh in order successor so it's the smallest value on the right side so to do that first this is going to be the pseudocode if x is right is not null then we're going to return the smallest value, um, tree min 
of x is right. Okay, and yeah, that's it's pretty much the first part. If x is right side is not null, so 15 is right side. 18, it's not null. We're gonna keep going all the way down, which is in this case is 17. Then that will be the successor. Okay. Now, if there's more nodes, let's let's say I add like 16 here, then the successor is gonna be 16, right? So you have to go all the way down, the smallest value on the right side. So here, 18's smallest value of 18 will be, keep going down, down, down to 16, and that's gonna be the success, successor of 15. Okay. So that's how you do this part. All right, now we're going to think about the other weird case. In this case, let's say 13. 13's weird case, okay? So as we could see here, 13 successor is 15, right? So because of this, we see that 13's right side is uh, null, right? 13's right side is null. So this, we can't just find the smallest value of the right side since 13's right side is null. So what do we have to do? We have to literally uh, go up the tree from 13 until we find a node that is a left child of the parent, right? So if I were to keep going up seven, seven's not a left child of, of the parent six, right? So I'm gonna keep going up six. Oh, six is the left child of the parent. Oh, okay. So then I'm gonna return the parent 15. So that's how you would find the in order successor uh, in order successor if their right side is null, right? So let's say find let's find the in order successor of nine. So what is the in order successor of nine? Well, nine's <laughs> nine's parent is the left side already, so that's just thirteen. So yeah, but okay, yeah, that that, that was an easy one. Four. Let's find in order successor of four. Well, the right side is null, right? Uh, so this we can't just find the minimum of the right side. So we have to keep going up until we find a child that is the left side, that is the left child of the parent, in this case is three. So then we just have to return the parent, which is six. So that's that's that. So the pseudocode here is that, uh, here's how CLRS did it. So they're gonna have a Y, which is equal to X's parent, while Y is not null and x is equal to y is right, x is going to equal to y, y is going to go to its parent, and then return y. So y is going to actually going to be the current parent you're on, because you're going to keep going up to the current parent, so it's going to be the parent, uh, yeah, so current parent. And then, um, yeah, so X is the current node, so what what's what does this do? So let's say I'm at 13. Y is going to be uh, 13's parent, which is 7. So and the, Y is going to be 13's parent, which is 7. When check is Y null. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, so Y is not null. And uh, is X is equal to Y's right? Is X 13 is equal to Y's right? Yes, so then we're going to go up, okay? We're gonna go up. So now six is seven, okay. Now we're gonna check, is y not null? Yes, yeah, y is not null. X is a uh, seven, right? Is x is equal to y is right? Yes, so then we have to go up again. So we're gonna come up to here. Now we're at 15, y is equal to 15, x is equal to uh, six. Is x equal to y is right? No. So then after that we're done, then we just have to return y which is 15 okay so i hope you guys hope i explained this correctly so that's that's what this successor is doing okay okay uh i'm gonna make it you guys how about you guys write the tree pre-order predecessor okay so how about you guys write the code for the predecessor write the pseudocode for the predecessor i, I don't uh that's just a good good that's a good um good procedure for you guys good tip for you guys okay Sorry guys, if I didn't show the pseudocode properly, I just looked at the video again. So yeah, if the right side is not null, then you just return the minimum of the right. Um, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the current height of the current parent of X. And then while the X is equal to Y's right, which is the parent, while X is a, the right child of the parent, 
what we're going to do is we're going to just keep going up. So we're going to set X is going to now equal to the parent and then Y is going to equal its parent. So that's what this code does. And then at the end you return Y. Okay. So that's the pseudo code of this. So, sorry guys, if I didn't uh, explain it correctly, I didn't show it to you guys, but yeah, this is the pseudo code. All right guys. So now let's think about how do we insert a node into a binary search tree? Well, let's say I want to insert 16. Well, I need to find the location of 16 first where it's going to be inserted into this tree and I need to I need to keep track of the parent and the reason why is because that once I get to the end I have to set the parents left or right to be 16 so in this case let's say I want to insert 16 so 16 is greater than 12 so I'm going to go to the right 16 is less than 18 so I'm going to go left 16 is greater than 15 I'm going to go to the right so now I'm at here I need to get this parent, right? I have to maintain the parent. And then 17, I have to check is it's less than uh, 17, right? 16 is less than 17, so I'm gonna put 16 on the left of 17. Okay, so that's how you insert. So whenever you insert, you have to keep track of the parent. And the reason why you have to keep track of the parent is that at the end, you have to insert uh, your new node at the left or the right of whatever parent you're at. So like when you go down, when you're traversing down, you have to keep track of which parent you're currently at. So in order to ins know where you're gonna insert your node from. So yeah, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the pseudocode now. So this is the pseudocode and I'll explain how it works. Um, so this is tree insert. Uh, T is the tree, Z, Z is the node you're inserting. Okay, so Z is the node you're inserting. Okay, um, so they say y is equal to null. Okay, they set y equal to null, and then they set x as the current t's root, which is the top root. Then while x is not null, they're going to get set y is equal to x, and then do if z is z's key is less than x's key then go to the left else x equal to x dot right um then after that they set z's parent is equal to y uh, normally you can't even do this like when you code unless you actually have like a parent node parent pointer for every single key every single node but yeah anyway z is equal to null if y is equal to null t dot root is equal to z then else if z's key is less than y's key i'm going to explain all this y dot left is equal to z else y y dot right is equal to z Okay, so y is actually the current parent you're at. So current parent you're at that you're keeping track of. X is the current node you're traversing downward. So X is current node going downward. And Z is a node that you're inserting. So what we started first is that, let's say I'm gonna find, let's say I wanna insert 16 again, right? So our, our value we're trying to insert is 16. So that's gonna be our Z node, right? Um, y is going to be the current parent and then x is going to be the root that you're currently on so the current node that you're on so while x is not null what they do is they set y is equal to y's parent is equal to x right and they're going to traverse downward so if the node that i'm trying to insert so in this case 16 is less than my current node i'm at i'm going to go to the left otherwise i'm going to go to the right so 16 is greater than 16 is greater than 12 right, the current node I'm at, so I'm gonna to go to the right. And then, yeah, it'll come back up here. Then it's gonna set, uh, so x is not equal to null, right? So x x is still not gonna equal to null cause like our current value of our current node is now 18 and x is still not equal to null. So yeah, then what we're gonna do is we are going to go set y is equal to x. So y is gonna now equal to this. 
and then x is, uh, we didn't update x yet. So then now they say uh, if z is less than, if the node we're trying to insert is less than the current node, then we're gonna go to the left again. Otherwise go to the right, so we do the same thing. So 16 is less than 18, so we're gonna go to the right. So, no, not right, it's the left. We're gonna go to the left. So now x is gonna equal to this, right? Our current node is now gonna equal to 15, and our parent is 18, right? Comes back up here. It resets its parent, so now uh, the parent is now equal to 15, and now we're going to check. So now y is equal to the current node, so now our current parent is 15, and now our x is going to be, we're going to check, uh, is the node I'm inserting, so my node is inserting is 16, right? Is uh, 16 less than the current node I'm at, so 15? Uh, no, it's not, so we're going to go to the right, so now our x, our current node is now going to equal to this, 17, and it comes back up here. And then uh, is x null? No, it's not null. So we're going to set y is equal to x. So uh, y is going to now equal to x. So y is going to point to 17, which is the parent. Um, is is 16 less than 17? Yes. So then x is now going to point to its left. So now x is going to point to a null value of here. Okay, so we're, so while this this loop is just keeping track of the parent and the current child we're currently going down on. Okay, so now uh, this z's parent is equal to y. So we're trying to insert sixteen, right? Um, they're assuming that we have a pointer uh, that when I know we're inserting is going to point back to the parent. That's not always the case, so let's just ignore that. But based on your implementation, you could write it like this. You could have another pointer pointing back to the parent. That'll just be really weird though, because imagine doing that. That's technically like a directed graph, if you think about it. Because if you have a pointer going back up and then going down, yeah, over and over again. But yeah, that'll be really weird, so let's just ignore that. We're gonna ignore this for now. Anyway, yeah, but what this is doing is it's setting the new node's parent to equal to the parent that I'm inserting at. So yeah, I'm gonna insert 16 over here on the left of 17. So what if I'm doing this, I'm going to set 16's parent to equal 17. But uh, yeah, we normally don't have pointers like that in BST implementations. So let's ignore this. If y is equal to null, okay, so this means that it's empty. So like, if y is equal to null, that means the whole tree was empty, because that means that the I never had a parent. That literally means that whenever I was traversing down I never had a parent at all. So that means, because like while I'm going downward, I'm updating my parent that I'm currently at, like while I traverse downward, that this means that there's no, there's no, the whole tree's empty. So th what they're doing is they're setting the root to be equal to the new node. So they're, so if this is a case, this is gonna be the new root, right? 16 is gonna be the new root, because that means the whole tree is empty. But that's not always the case, right? So that's not the case in this case. All right, so now what they're gonna do, they're gonna check, check is six as a new key that we're inserting, uh, 16, is it less than Y's key, which is apparent? Uh, yes, it is. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna set Y's left, so this is Y, Y's left is gonna equal to 16. And yeah, that's basically the whole code. Um, that's how this whole pseudocode works. Uh, I hope you guys could see it. Yeah, that's the whole pseudocode, how this works, and that's how insertion works. Um, deletion is way more complicated, and I have to go over that, so I'm going to go over that with you guys soon. Alright guys, so how do we do deletion? Okay, so let's say the node that I'm deleting, 16, I'm trying to delete it, right? Uh, if it has no children, well if it has no children, I could just technically set the parent's node to be empty, to be null, right? So here... 16 has no children, right? So then I could just have 16's parent set 16's value to be null. So then that will get rid of 16. So that's the first case, the easy case. Now let's think about if it has one one child. So let's say I want to delete 15. All right, if I want to delete 15, 15 has one child, 17, right? All I have to do is move 17 up. That's all I have to do, okay? Because if I delete 15, so, uh, we know 17 is just going to be like either 17, uh, either our node is going to be less than or greater than than 15, right? And uh, because it's only one child, nothing else 
nothing else uh, on the left side or the right side is gonna bother it. So I could just move 17 upward and then that'll be my node, okay? If it has one child. All right, the issue is, is if it has two child, two children. If it has two children, we have to maintain the order of the tree by using, um, we have to maintain the order of the tree by taking its in order successor. So let's say, let's say I want to delete 12. If I want to delete 12, right, I can't just take 17 and put on the top, right? Uh, main reason for that is that that's going to violate a lot of things. I can't take like 15 and put on top, uh, not, not 15, I can't put 18 on the top, right? That, that, that will violate a lot of things. Because then if I put 18 on the top, let's say, let's say I delete 12 and I put 18 on the top, um, 15 is going to be on the over here and that violates it because 15 is not greater than 18, right? So if I want to delete the delete a node that has two children, I have to get the in order successor. So remember the in order su successor is the one is just in sorted order. It's the next larger value than your current node, right? So 12's next larger value is 15, right? So I'm going to have to replace 15 with 12 and then reorder the rest of the tree. Okay, um, that takes some, that's gonna take a bunch of uh, splitting cases and I'll redraw the cases with you guys, okay, right now. Okay, so CLRS labels these as Q, L, and R. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I accidentally screwed up the first drawing. But for one child, remember if Q is the parent, and Z is the one we're deleting, and R is just that one child. If I delete Z, I could just move R up. So then Q would be still be the parent, and R will just be moved up. Okay, so let's say I still have one child, and I'm deleting Z, right? Z has one child, L. If I'm deleting Z, L just gets moved up. So then Q would be Q, then uh, let's see, Q and then L. Okay, so these are that's one child. Now let's think about... Uh, the node we're deleting has two children, so two children. So uh, I'm gonna still label a Q, Q, then uh, what is it? What does it say? Z, 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 L, Y, and X. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna remove Z. Right, I'm removing Z. Uh, so if I'm removing Z, let's say, uh, so Z's in order successor, which is the smallest value on the right side. Remember at our 12, in order successor is just the one value that's larger than 12, which is 15. So to get that, we have to go to the smallest value on the right side. So 18 smallest value is 15. So we have to replace that. So Z's in order successor, what is the right side? Right side is Y. What is its smallest value? Uh, it's null. So if it's null, and I'm getting rid of Z, um, what I could do is I could just put Y, move Y up. So then if I, I could just move Y up, and I have L, and then I have X, okay? So if I don't have an in-order successor, so this is the case of no in no successor. If no successor, then I could just move uh, y up. So this is y, move y's value up. Uh, yeah, so then this value becomes y, yeah. The z becomes y. Yeah, if I delete z, I could just move value up, y up. So if there's no successor, I could just do that. Okay, so now the problem is when you have an in-order successor, so this is with, uh, there's in order successor. So successor exists. So now to do it, let's say we have uh, Q, Z, we have Z, R, left, L is left. Um, and then there's, what is it, uh, L, there's, yeah, okay, so in order successor y, then x, okay? And we're deleting z, right? So this, the q is just the parent of z, so. Okay, so I'm deleting z, so I'm trying to delete z. 
z's in order successor is y, right? y is the smallest value that it's on the right side of z. So y is smallest of y. So how am I going to replace it? Well, um, what I have to do is I have to replace y to become the parent of r, and then add it, uh, remove z, and then add that as a new value. So I have to make this. Um, so I have to split this into two trees. So I have to make this. Uh, so they have z. Uh, q q is still the parent of z, by the way. It really doesn't matter q. So we have to split this into like q z and then l. And then what I have to do is I have to change y, the in order successor. So y is an in order successor, right? We have to make this into the parent of r. So we have to literally rotate this to become the top, to the parent of r to rotate it. And then once I, once this rotation is done, I have to delete z. Delete z, then I could set my y value, my in order successor with the right value. Okay. So let me reiterate that again. If I want to delete Z, I have to replace Y to become the the Y, which is the in order successor, right? We have to get the successor. So Z is going to, we have to replace Z with Y, the in order, in order successor, which is the next value in the sorted order. To do that, I have to rotate my Y to become the parent of R now. So then that's what I did here. Y is now the parent of R. And this is uh, R's, R is gonna, ha X has to become the the child of R. So that's what I had to do over here. Then after that, we just have to delete Z and then move Y up to become Q, Y, L, R, and X, okay? So that's this. That's how the theory of this completely thing goes. If there's a successor exists, we have to replace, we have to rotate our our tree of our in order successor to become the parent of R. And then, yeah, then once we do that, we have to uh, put our in order successor up and remove our value. And that's becomes this. So the reason why we could rotate this to become this is because uh, I know that R is going to be greater than Y, right? So then uh, if I want to make my Y my parent, I just move Y to the top and then R has to be on the right side of Y. And uh, because we know X is always less than, um, yeah, yeah, because we know X is greater than Y, but it's less than R, we have to make X as a little small value of R, okay? So that's what this rotation does, and then it does that, okay? So CLRS doesn't really have a, what they did was they, they did a thing where they created another method called transplant, which replaces the subtree at a node u with the subtree at a node v. So then u, uh, the u's parent becomes v's parent and u's parent ends up becoming v's child, okay? So they created like a completely separate method that does that and I'll explain that uh, now. All right guys, so this is the transplant method. Uh, if, if u's parent is null, then that means the tree was empty in the first place. So then the tree's root now is equal to V. Um, otherwise, if U is on the left side of its parent, then U, uh, the parent, U's parent, parent's left is now equal to V. Otherwise, U's parent's uh, right is gonna equal to V. So this is gonna change the parent to be uh, V. Uh, if V is not equal to null, then V's parent is now equal to U's parent, okay? That's what this does. Okay, so let's see this in action at transplant R Y. Okay, so uh, the first if statement is not going to happen because it's not empty. So, so now in this case, uh, R is U, Y is V. Okay, so U, R's R's parent. So, uh, so if R is on the left side of the parent, which is not, okay, so R is on the right side of the parent, right? R is on the right side, so it's gonna to go to this else statement. So then R's parent's right is now gonna to equal to V. So what is our V? V is Y. So then Z's, R's parent, which is Z, Z's uh, right is gonna be Y, okay? I'll let the left stays the same. So Z's right is gonna be equal to Y based on this, so it changes the parent to be y. Okay, 
if v is not null, yeah, so y is not null, uh, uh, y is, v's dot p parents is going to equal to use parent. So use parent was z, so then this is going to just update the parent pointer, which is going to equal to that. Okay, so that's just going to push y as the, to become the parent of so what this is going to do is it's just going to move y up. So now y is going to become the parent of uh, y moves up to become the right child of z. Okay, uh, this doesn't actually move the r. So um, it doesn't update the v's left and v's right. So we have to be responsible to do that. So this transplant doesn't update v's left and v's right so it doesn't update y's left and y's right so what this transplant did was literally just move this y to be become to the top okay so we have to be responsible for moving this up to the top okay so yeah this isn't really a rotation actually because like uh we're actually supposed to move r to become the bottom the child of y like it's supposed to be this right, r, and then x, it's supposed to become that, but it didn't do that, so let's see what else CLRS has to say, um, oh, okay, so they, they actually wrote an actual pseudocode for it, so I'm gonna go over that, I'm gonna write that now, all right, guys, so this is the code for pseudocode to delete a node for z, deleting z, so if z's left is null, we're gonna transplant uh, z and z right. So that's gonna move the right node to replace z, okay? And that makes sense, because if you have one node, uh, the, uh, if the left side's null, then we're gonna move right to replace z. Else if, if z's right is null, then we're gonna transplant z and z is left. So that's gonna move the left node to replace z, okay? So based on this case, uh, in this case, z's, we're moving z, right? Uh, z's left is null, right, in the first case here. So we're going to transplant z's right to replace z. So z's right is r, and that replaces z, so that becomes this, okay? So that makes sense, okay? Because we're moving, if there's one, this is the case for one child, okay? All right, uh, same thing with the one child case here. If uh, z's right null, right here, z's right is null, then, um, and I'm deleting z, I'm gonna replace l, move up to, and replace z. So that's what this does is. So l now replaces z, and that's what this code does. Transplant z's left with z, okay? So that's that, remove z's left, puts a uh, remove it on z, okay? So that's what this does. Okay, so now um, let's look at this the else case. Y is equal to minimum of z dot right. So what does that do? That gets the in order successor, the successor of of z, z's of z. So the successor is the next value that is the uh, next value that's in sorted order. So that's going to be y. Um, so let's not look at the first, let's not look at the if statement for now. So let's say that here we, this is a Z, right? We're deleting Z and um, we're gonna find Y's in order successor, okay? So Z's in order successor is um, null. So this is gonna be null, right? Uh, and in this case, if if uh, y dot parent is not equal to z, so in our case y is going to be null, right? Because y is successor. Z's right here is y. Okay, this is kind of confusing, but in this case z's right. Uh, the minimum of z's right is um, null, right? Because there's nothing here, right? So then this is going to be null, and then we're going to transplant uh, z y with y, right? And that's going to move this up, and that becomes this. Okay, so yeah, that's what this does. Um, actually, yeah, wait, the in order successor should be the minimum on the right side, and 
Okay, it's not null, actually. Yeah, it will just move y up. So that's what this does. Okay, so if y is equal to minimal of z's right, then transplant z with y, and then that's going to move y up. Okay, so now let's think about this if statement that we didn't go over. If uh, the parent, if y dot, if the y dot parent is not equal to z. So that's this case that is down here. Um, I'll draw it out. That's the one that we went over already. This case. This crazy case. Y and then X. Okay. Um, so remember it does this. Yeah, we have to split it. Remember, we have to make Y to become the parent. So I'll show you guys how it does this. Okay, so uh, Q is just the parent of, of Z, okay? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really affect anything. I don't even know why they included it in the case. Okay, so Z's in order successor, right? Which is the smallest value of my bad. Z's in order successor is the smallest value on the right side, right? So that's going to be Y. So Y is going to be here. Now, Y's parent is not equal to Z, right? Y's parent is not equal to Z. As we see down here, Y's parent is R and it's not equal to Z, okay? So this, it's gonna run this if statement. Now we're gonna transplant Y with Y's right. So what does that do? Y, we're gonna transplant Y with Y's right. So that means X is gonna move up, okay? So X is gonna move up. Um, well, they don't even rotate it. So technically they're gonna move X up. So X is gonna move up and it's gonna be like R and then, yeah. X is gonna move up. Y's right is it gonna to equal to Z's right. So Y's right is gonna to equal to Z's right. So Y's right, so here's what it does, okay. Um, it actually doesn't do this. I'm gonna get another sheet of paper to explain how it does it. So. So remember we have this case that we're trying to go over the last case. Okay. So Y is now, so the, we know it that doesn't have two children, right? It has, it doesn't have one child. So is the if, if statement's going to go here. So Y is going to equal to Z's right. So um, Y is going to equal the minimum of Z's right. So Z's, the minimum of Z's right, R, is gonna be Y, so Y is gonna equal to Y, okay? Uh, y does not equal to, Y's parent is not Z. So Y's parent, R, it's not Z, right? It's not Z. So what does it do? It transplants Y with y, Y's right. So what is Y with Y's right? So this is gonna move X up. So Y's right is gonna be X, and that's what it's going to do. Okay, it's going to move X up. Okay. Then Y's right is going to equal to Z's right. So Y's right is going to equal to Z's right. So then Y's right, Z's right. Z's right is R. So then Y's right is going to equal to Z's right, which is R. So that's what this does. Okay, y's right is going to equal to z's right. And then it updates the parent, y's right dot parent. So y's right dot parent, r's parent is going to equal to y. And that's, we don't care about that. Okay, um, transplant t, z, y. So then now what's going to do, it's going to move y upward and transplant y with z. So then now um, z is going to be gone. So remember there's a q here, that's just a, Parent of that. So now transplant Z with Y. So now um, Z is going to be gone. And then it's going to be Q points to Y. Right? Y's left is going to be Z's left. So Z's left is L. So Y's left is going to be Z's left. So that's L. And then, yeah. 
y's left parent, l's parent is now equal to y. Okay, and that's how this code works. So yeah, that, that successfully deleted the fourth case of, and it did the whole rotation thing of our last case of this. So yeah, um, rate, comp, subscribe. I'm really tired, it's like 2 a.m. So yeah, hope you, I hope you guys understood my ex explanation of binary search trees. So that was everything about binary search trees. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll, I'll check you guys later. Peace.